Hi guys, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to another workshop video. In today's session, we'll be looking and working with watercolour. Um, we're going to be working towards a little study of a sand lizard and it's in collaboration with the amphibian and reptile conservation and looking at endangered species along the Sefton coast. So I've just got a couple of examples here of the kind of work that you can make with watercolour. Obviously these are in my style and you've got a, a ranging here from mixed media including pen, pen and ink drawings over the top of watercolour washes to abstract landscapes to expressive animal studies and really I've got quite a unique expressive way of working with the medium. Watercolour you can get in many forms from pans to tubes. There's a lot of different brands out there that you can use and it's just about finding what's comfortable for you. I personally prefer using tubes if I can, but if I'm out and about, I might use the pans. Again, we've got a wide variety of brushes here, so just ranging in thickness, ranging in hair type, from sable to Japanese kind of calligraphy style. I've got flat heads to round heads, and again, it's just personal preference and what's going to work well for the job. Blotting paper or tissue, I've just got a load of tatty rags from around the studio. I've also got some other pieces of equipment that might be useful, so palette knives, a couple of house brushes might, which might make some interesting marks. I've got a sponge just if, if and when you need. Okay, great, so I'm just going to start now by using three colours. I've got ultramarine blue, ultramarine blue sorry, cadmium yellow and a burnt sienna. And I'm just going to practice by seeing what they can do, seeing how they work, seeing what brush marks I can make. First exercise here, I'm just creating a gradual gradient from blue to burnt sienna. This could be kind of remind you of a landscape maybe, like a nice beach. Obviously the colours are, are a bit more exaggerated than you would normally do. And I'm just really taking my time. I'm starting at one end and I'm working it down. Every time I add a new colour, it's with a completely clean brush. So I've got two ink, uh, sorry not ink, I've got two water pots. One I'm washing off the excess paint in and then the other I'm just double checking just to make sure it is clean. And then you'll notice on the right hand side I'm just dabbing the excess water off on the paper to make sure that the more pigment I add as the gradient goes on, I'm not just adding loads and loads of water. And again, just working down, I'm just showing now the different effects that you can create. If you just add water onto the page first with pigment afterwards, if you go and add in your pigment a bit more of a pigment heavy kind of thicker paint stroke um, and just really this is a good exercise if you're new to watercolour just to have a play and a practice. There I've actually put half of my watercolour on one side of my brush and the other half on the other and again whereas I might not be the most conventional watercolour painter I admit a lot of these techniques kind of work for my style and, and suit me and the work that I like to make. So again, I'm just playing really. I'm just literally testing out the medium, seeing what works, putting water down first, adding pigment in. Um, and if you're new to watercolor, this is a really good exercise. You can do small studies or you can just practice little brush marks. What I'm doing at this point now is I'm actually putting color on one side of the brush and then a different color on the other side of the brush and seeing about these multi kind of brush strokes that I can create. So earlier in the video when I was giving examples of some of the work that you could make, one of the illustrations that I had was like a blood orange with a very tight pen drawing on top of a, a watercolour wash. And this is just that idea there, so I had this wash down already, we had the blues fading into the yellows, into the, um, into the siennas, into the dusty browns, and I'm kind of just exaggerating some of those features, having a little playful illustration on top. Obviously it's important to note that the watercolour is completely dry at this point. And the pen I'm using is a, a Micron Black Fine Liner, which is really pigmented, so it really stands out. But you can see that it's just a really nice little illustration style. So let's jump into the um, let's jump into the long study of the sand lizard now. I think in total this was about 40 minutes work, which obviously I've sped up to about 
10 minutes of painting time. And the first thing that I'll really do is I'll just iron out roughly my colors for the bases, for, for the backgrounds if I'm gonna put one in, for the underpainting. Um, the Sand Lizard is obviously kind of this quite vivid bright green. So I'm going kind of mixing two colors here. I've got quite a bright green that I'm gonna add a bit of white to. It's very yellow heavy. And then I'm using a cobalt blue just to add darker tones and suggestions throughout. And I'm just gonna start quite roughly and quite loosely. I'm just gonna add a rough wash onto the kind of underbelly, onto the brightest green. Kind of similar to the ink tutorial I did, I did. It's kind of important to know you want to work from light to dark. So unless you're using a masking fluid or masking tape to keep those parts of the paper really bright white, then you want to learn work light to dark because if you, you can't really work dark to light unless you're going to add a different paint on top such as acrylic or oil. So you want to make sure that your lightest parts of the painting are either going to be left as paper or just a very very light wash. And you can see here my style is quite expressive, it's quite um, let the brush, let the paint do the work. I'm putting palette knives straight onto the page and then I'll actually add water straight onto the page just to start blending it around and moving it creating these lovely undertones. You can see I've actually used pencil as a rough guide and I've not really gone ahead and drawn all that heavier lines in purely because some parts of this are going to be quite light and if I press heavy of the pencil you're going to see it come through. So really the guides are just there to, to guide the, the brush marks and then when I've got the key components in I don't really need them in. You can see I've shaded the eye and I've shaded kind of his ear and that's purely because I know they're going to be super dark and you're not going to see them and it just helps me construct kind of place things. So again I'm going to be using different brushes so I've just used this medium to large-ish flat head just to put in some rough marks. I'm starting to iron out kind of some tonal values so obviously the ear is going to be dark, the mouth's going to be dark and you can see I'm a little bit impatient there. I've just let the, the paint bleed a little bit where I'm ironing out the mouth. Um, and I'm going to swap now to this smaller round brush to just start putting in some details under the belly. I'm using that darker green to suggest shadow rather than using like a black or something. I'm just going to use a darker green. Um, starting to pick out some of the individual scales because if you look at the sand lizard as well, and this is this is true for, for a lot of animals, whether it's fur, whether it's feathers, the reflections of, of, from the light will have different colors in them. Um, and different components and different tonal and, and light values. So you're trying to just capture something that, that's, for me, it's quite organic, it's quite expressive, but it's also quite true to the thing that you're studying. So for this painting, I've actually used quite a limited palette. I've used cobalt blue, I've used cadmium yellow, um, I've used Payne's grey, which I use rather than black, and I use it as one of my darkest values when I paint in watercolour, or acrylic for that matter. Um, and later on you'll see I use a brown, so I use quite a limited palette and I also use white, obviously just to water things down and, and lighten stuff up. So I'm just working on the driest bits of the painting when I can. So as you may know, watercolor is quite quick to dry, but also, you know, if you are working on a study, you may want to have a hairdryer or something with you so you can just dry as you go, especially if you're just wanting to focus on one small component, sorry, before you move on to, the, to a larger part of the painting. I don't tend to have that problem. I tend to maybe sometimes blot away some excess water or I'll always find another part of the painting that I can kind of work on. So. For example, I've built up the undercoats on the light green scales, then I've added in some of the darker bits on the eye and the ears. And then while they're all gonna be kind of drying now, I'm gonna add that brown and kind of those highlights on the top of his head with the brown. And you can see I'm being quite loose, I'm being quite sketchy, I'm being quite um, expressive with my marks. I'm letting the brush and I'm letting the watercolor do the work. If it bleeds a little bit into other watery parts, I'm not too worried. If it's if there's a few mistakes, I'm kind of fine. I quite like those imperfections to stand out within my work. So 
So I've gone ahead of I'm using like a, a slight white glaze there and all I've really done is I've just mixed white in with some of the base colors that I've used and I'm just putting it on top and I know that it's not going to be brilliant white because watercolor is transparent um, but it is going to add a slight sheen to kind of emulate some of the reflections on the scales that you would get and again I'm just working now with an even smaller brush suggesting some of those scales and different greens working on it with some blues um, adding a bit more white a bit more gray and just really starting to build it up in layers so again like I said I'm just going back through this painting what's dry I'll be working back on top of that at this point I'm using a, a finer brush again but I know it can hold quite a lot of water Um, and again, I've just made a little mistake there, but I'm kind of rolling with it. I've just blotted away some of that excess water, and I'm actually going to use that then back onto the painting further above as texture, and it just brings another quality, another dimension to the page. Adding that bigger brush in, probably faff in there, just around the eyes, just adding some of those finer details. And again, for this kind of work, I've let the water dr color dry now completely. And I'm just coming back in with the Payne's gray rather than using black. It's still quite, probably quite an illustrative st style, but on the lizard, between each scale, it's got these darker qualities, which obviously shade or lack of light. And they have a darker kind of line work. And I'm just exaggerating those now as I work with this line brush. Um, I'm just going to bring some of the finer details to life so that you can tell where like that the scales and inside each scale now you have like a multitude of colors patterns from the previous brush marks and the brush strokes and i'm not really being that precious with the line work i feel like some of the motions and some of the expressive brush brush marks that i'm using help capture like movement or character um Especially when you're working with something like nature, they really help to generate something quite organic. So I'm just getting towards the final stages of this little painting. Um, finishing up with just adding some smaller details, some of those smaller scales, more intricate um, brush marks. I've obviously left the kind of the top of the head quite expressive and loose, um, and it's all starting to come together now. Probably added some splashes here and there just to help generate more texture and tonal values. And you can spend as long or as quick as you want on these like little illustrations and as you can see I've not gone and drawn scales all over the lizard I've just got done a couple here and there to suggest them sweet I think that's about it for today's workshop guys if you've got any feedback or questions please leave them in the comments below and we'll get back to you I hope you've enjoyed today's workshop and please tune in for the next one peace <laughs>